Today we're gonna make mead. We're gonna stick blackberries and blueberries as the additive. Honey's coming straight from the rascal apiary. Let's get into it. Our scale down here we've teared out the weight of the carboy we are filling with honey from our honey gate three pounds of honey for one or for one gallon of mead and our scale ends at three pounds 0.2 ounces okay I'm just gonna pour some of this water into my measuring glass and we're gonna put that into the microwave heat it up just a little bit so we can make sure we dissolve all of our honey so we're going to fill this small measuring glass up to two ounces of water. I'm just gonna use hot tap water and then we will check the temperature. We need between 104 and 109 degrees for our yeast. We're at 113 degrees right now. So we're just gonna leave this sitting on the counter until it reaches the appropriate temperature. So we have a little bit of separation or actually very clear separation between the honey and the warm water. We'll just shake it up really well, make sure all of that honey dissolves nicely into the water. So what if you're using fake honey? Then it will already dissolve, it'll already mix together because then it's just sugar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, artisanal. <laughs> he just asked me if I just used uh, distilled water. Yes. And I said, yes, it's like, because if it has chlorine in the water, it can kill the yeast that we're using. So and what does I the yeast do? The yeast is what makes the alcohol, which we want. So the yeast will eat the sugars and the honey and will basically fart gas. That's the, the crude way of saying it, which makes the alcohol. But you can actually use tap water if you need to, but you have to really plan ahead. So you can get like a big bowl, however much water you need, fill it up with your tap water, leave it out on your counter, cover it loosely, like maybe cheesecloth or something like that. And all of the chlorine will evaporate out of that water. And then you can use it, but don't just use straight tap water. Okay. It makes this really gross looking cloudy stuff, but the honey loves it. It loves the honey. Or, yeah, it loves the honey. Okay, now we're just going to let that sit while we add our berries to our mead mixture. Now that we've added the blueberries and blackberries, we're going to top off with water. And leave just enough room to pitch our yeast. You also want to leave a little bit of spare room so if the yeast is overactive that it won't overtake your airlock. I go just under the carboy where it says one gallon. So we're going to fill up our little vessel here for a hydrometer reading. There's a berry that got out so we're using a spoon to stop all the berries and that's about good put our hydrometer in and give it a little spin and then we will read we are at 26 and Specific gravity of 1.11. Mm -hmm. And potential gravity of. Is that 15? Right at 15. This is our log. There will be a link in the description. Now we're going to pitch our yeast. Oh. 
bubbles. Okay. I'm going to put the cap back on again, give it another quick shake, and then we will install our airlock. So we have our new mead on the left, and on the right you'll see what you do if your airlock starts overflowing. So you hook up a tube to the top, and then you just run it down to you know, water in a mason jar or whatever you have, and then let it bubble out. All right, enjoy.